Hi, everyone, and welcome. It's so good to see your faces. Oh, goodness. Well, we have a lot to do tonight. A lot of wonderful things that are happening and have happened and will happen. And so I'm going to begin this with just a short poem by uh, called Autumn by um, Rain, Rainier Marie Wilka. The leaves fall, fall as from afar, like distant gardens withered in the heavens. They fall with slow and lingering descent. And in the nights, the heavy earth too falls from out of the stars into the solitude. Thus all doth fall. This hand of mine must fall, and lo, the other one, it is the law. But there is one who holds this falling infinitely softly in their hands. I think it would be really nice just to hear a little bit uh, uh, from the friends who are on this um, on here tonight. So uh, I think I will begin. I'm Wanda Guthrie. I'm the convener for the uh, Southwest Pens uh, Pennsylvania uh, chapter of Pennsylvania Interfaith Power and Light. And uh, I see that we have Kathy. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Kathy Robofsky, the Development Associate with Pennsylvania Interfaith Power and Light. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's wonderful to have you all with us. You can always reach me at outreach at PAAIPL or at 412-953-5202. I'll call on D. Oh, sorry, I didn't unmute. <laughs> I'm Dee Kacherka, I'm on the board of PAIPL. Um, I run the Pittsburgh Blueberry Project. This past year, we gave away a thousand blueberry projects to frontline communities, and we serve the community gardens locally. Um, and I do a lot of the, um, I guess, the frontline work in the community, doing a lot of community outreach, social justice. Um, I'm a retired registered nurse. And um, who can go next? Is Patty on? I don't see Patty. How about um, Lois? I will unmute myself. Hello. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, I'm Lois Drumheller, and um, I um, sit on the board of Protect PT. Uh, nonprofit organization in Harrison City. We're dedicated to ensuring residents safety, security, and quality of life by uh, engaging in education and advocacy to protect uh, economic, environmental, and legal rights of the people in Westmoreland and Allegheny County. Um, I was invited here by our uh, executive director, uh, Jillian Graber. Should I, should I, and are we popcorning around to various people? Because I can't see names. All I can see is the person talking. <laughs> okay. Well, I think I will call on Katie Westman. Kate, Kate Westman. Kate, you there? Hi. Yeah, I'm Kathy Westman, and I've cared about our local pollution and fracking and all that um, environmental ever since Wanda led the eco theology course how many years ago now seven yeah. um, <laughs> so um i'm glad to be here and i renica did have you spoken i have not no thank you mm -hmm. um i'm renica weimer i just started helping out um with pa interfaith power and light um i'm just here to listen and learn and share some information and hoping to get more involved Kate, no, I'm coming. And I see Kata Mintz. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm David. Um, <laughs> and I, like Lois was, I'm on the board of Protect PT and was invited here by Jillian. And 
I think Lois described our organization very well. So uh, I'm just along also to to visit your meeting and and uh, I think I'm going to call on Jillian since uh, she invited both of us. Hello, I'm Jillian Graber, uh, the executive director of Protect PT, and um, I've known Wanda since I started doing this work. Um, actually. Thomas Martin Center was our first fiscal sponsor uh, before we became a 501c3. So uh, thank you so much for inviting me here to speak tonight. And I'm going to call on um, Katie Ruth. Good evening, everyone. My name is Katie Ruth. I'm the incoming executive director at Pennsylvania Interface Power and Light. Um, Kathy invited me to join y'all's meeting this evening, so I'm excited to be here with you all. Alice? Hi. Um, I don't know if you can see me. Can you see me? We can. Okay. Yes. Um, hi, I'm Alice, and um, I'm here also just to learn tonight and hope to get more involved in the future. I have gone to some meetings in the past, but I haven't um, been very active. I I'm very interested in learning tonight. I, I do live in Washington County and um, live there pretty close to some fracking that goes on. So um, I'd like to learn more. Yes, if you're in Western Pennsylvania, we've all heard of fracking and we've all tried to do whatever we can to eliminate it. <laughs> so this is a great opportunity tonight to hear more uh, about the work that's being done so I'd like to really introduce um, our new executive director, Katie Ruth. Uh, Katie grew up in Australia, and Katie was enchanted by waterways and natural environments from a young age. Um, many summers afternoons she spent down by the river with her feet in the mud, exploring the flora and fauna. This was also the first her first exposure to the harm that occurs when pollution and trash end up in our waterways. Katie holds a BA in Christian theology and an MA in public leadership. They bring a variety of nonprofit faith-based and organizational experience to the to her no position as an executive director of Pennsylvania Interfaith Power and Light. Uh, she, she's passionate about peacemaking and justice, particularly through the lens of ecofeminism and interfaith collaboration. When she's not working or studying, Katie loves to explore new places, read and play music. She is almost always found with a cup of tea in her hand. Do you have a cup of tea in your hand tonight, Katie? You truly caught me without a cup of tea, which is <laughs> quite ironic. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to get a kind of a good introduction to the work um, that's been happening around here. Um, Dee, if you'd like to, do you have anything that you'd like to say uh, about the work? We talked a little bit about the blueberries, which were, it's, it's an amazing project. Tell us about how many blueberries were planted. Am I on mute? Okay, I'm off of mute, okay. Now, um, last year was the first year we did the blueberry project and we had ordered a thousand blueberry bushes from Maine and they were delivered a week before Earth Day. And we were able to uh, connect with the local community gardens and distribute the blueberry bushes. They were a thousand plugs, which was very difficult to get them all distributed that week they came frozen on a huge truck from Maine. We had no idea this was how they were going to be. But anyhow, we um, the community of Hazelwood, which has more than 60% um, of its residents or in lower middle um, income, um, put together a, a day celebration and invited vendors and had musicians and food trucks and distributed over 400 blueberry bushes to um, members of their community. Um, a lot of these frontline communities 
have very small yards. And although we typically plant trees as part of our creation care, um, we found that not everybody wants to put a tree in their yard, but a blueberry bush that is like, we call them mini trees because these are hybrid blueberry bushes that grow six feet tall and they have to be planted five feet apart. So they're, they're a big, big bush and they will yield six to seven pints of blueberries. So they are a very good source of nutritious food for any family that chooses to put one of these in their yard. Well, 400 families in Hazelwood chose and then the Homewood Community Gardens, several community gardens there also wanted blueberry bushes to distribute. Some organizations use them as Mother's Day gifts. Um, we found that they really um, had a very diverse need for, for these blueberry bushes. So much so that we are doing the program again for 2023. This time we will have 500 blueberry bushes to distribute. So if any of your church groups, any of your community gardens, any group, there's no restriction. We want people planting them in the yard. They're part of our creation care and we want families to benefit from the nourishment. And we just like building community and reaching out to the community. And what a nice way to do that. You know, if you go into Lowe's and buy a blueberry bush, you're going to pay upwards of $30 for them and you can, we're going to be giving them away for free. So as Mother's Day gifts or, you know, if anyone, if you contact me, contact PAIPL, we will have these blueberry bushes ready by the end of April. So. We just really benefited from the blueberry bushes in our community garden and they just, they're so pretty this time of year they're a pretty kind of a red uh the leaves are kind of red uh and orange looking and they're beautiful but yeah and you don't need a green thumb we give you an instruction sheet with them you know people who have planted bushes in the past and say oh i always fail when i plant a blueberry bush it's because your soil needs to be acidic and you can do that with coffee grinds. Coffee is very acidic. You don't have to go out and invest in any type of um, product to, you know, get your soil acid, pine needles. And we, we teach all natural ways to get that soil acidic. And as long as you can water that plant a few times a week, you can be a success at growing blueberry bushes. Yes. Now, I guess another thing that we haven't mentioned yet is the upcoming uh, conference that's going to be held, the Pennsylvania Interfaith Power and Light Conference. Kathy, do you have some information or are you going to put it up? Um, uh, hey, thanks, Wanda. Yeah, I'm going to um, put that up on our next slide. I wonder, should we ask Katie to tell us a little more about herself? before we move on to the next slide. Yes, yes, especially because this is coming up and this is a big thing for us and so glad that you're here. Okay, yes, please, Katie Ruth, let us know what you're up well, to. Um, mostly I'm just in the background right now, learning lots about um, different policies and procedures and meeting with different folks on the board and our staff. Um, getting ready and working a lot with David on having a nice transition between the two of us. So as he steps back, I'm stepping in. My first day is on November, my first official day, I should say, is November 15th. So right after the annual conference. So you'll be able to reach me at director at PAIPL.org beginning November 15th. Um, and I'll be around in the background. I'm working a lot with Kathy, um, particularly, and learning a lot more about what's happening out in Pittsburgh. Um, I went to college in Philadelphia, and I live in central Pennsylvania. Um, I've had the privilege of being out in Pittsburgh to visit, but haven't spent a lot of time um, exploring that, that your side <laughs> of the state. So I'm really looking forward to getting plugged in and hearing more about what is happening um, and how PIPL can support you as we continue to grow. So um, I've got an open door, open inbox policy. So feel free to reach out. Um, I'm very glad to be connected with all of you. Oh. 
and it's going to be so nice to meet you. I can't wait till you come to Pittsburgh. <laughs> Yeah, I mentioned uh, to Wanda earlier that we're we're thinking of a trip in mid-December, December 15th or 16th. So we'll be planning a big welcome for Katie. So for all of you on the call and for your friends and colleagues uh, throughout your network, perhaps we'll have a, an in-person celebration at that time to welcome Katie officially to our region. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, uh, so yeah, I do. I do have some other updates. Uh, we've been we've been having some great success with our virtual first Friday series. Uh, we had 12 people come to the first first Friday, which was uh, the first Friday in October. And uh, that was about environmental justice and creation care and the work that we do to address injustice in our world. So I invite you all to definitely um, <clears throat> look at the YouTube channel, our Pennsylvania Interfaith Power and Light YouTube channel for a recording of that session. And if you do happen to listen to it, to please fill out the Google form that's part of the recording chat so that um, you can provide feedback on the session and answer some questions and tell your stories, even though you're listening to it without us live, we'd love to hear what you have to say about it. I'm going to attempt to click on a link here and hope it opens. Let's see. Ah, there. Can you see uh, my screen there with the um, PA Interfaith Power and Light registration link on it? Yes. Oh, good, good. Uh, so this is. Um, I will share these links with you after the event tonight. Uh, so this would be um, the first one in November is going to be on waste conservation. And this will uh, be part of our fulfillment of our grant. We were generously funded by the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection in their environmental education grant program. And this is part of the fulfillment of the South Caring for Creation with Southeast P PAIPL. And you will be able to register right here. It'll take you to our standard uh, salsa registration link. So we hope that you'll consider registering for that with us. I will be conducting a hybrid session in November. We will be broadcasting from St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Mount Lebanon, but it will be a virtual meeting, so you will be able to attend. So that's very exciting. Uh, this is the first time I've done the hybrid, and it'll kind of be a practice <laughs> in leading up to our November annual conference, which you can see in this link here, will also be on a Sunday with this year's theme of environmental justice and human resilience. So this year it is Sunday, November 13th from 1 to 4 p.m. We're asking for donations of $25 to attend the conference. Uh, however, if you are a student or if you're in financial distress, please reach out to me and I will make sure that you're connected with the link which will help you to register at a lower cost. We are broadcasting the entire conference keynote session and response panel across the state. And then we are having four in-person location workshops. Uh, here in Pittsburgh, we will be at Duquesne University in their college hall, room 104. Uh, so I'll be happy to provide you with details on how to get there and how to park. Uh, you can also click on any of these links uh, when you visit our website and it will take you to the actual page uh, for that particular session. We're fortunate to have two workshops, the number one being the Healing Spirit of the Earth from 2 to 2.50 with Dr. Patty DeMarco and Shaman Pomai Shakman Yajalaji. Uh, they are going to talk about how as human beings we need to return to the land to heal our civilization and they're going to discuss human resilience as it is tied to the land and the need to regenerate our earth so that we can sustain all species long into the future. Then number two will be successes and challenges in frontline communities from 3 to 350 with three of wonderful people I've enjoyed working with, uh, meeting very recently and developing programs with in southwestern Pennsylvania. Wayne Younger from Open Hand Ministries, 
John Creasy from Garfield Community Farm and the Open Door Church, and Joanna Deming from the Perry Hill Top Farm Youth Citizens Council. So they're gonna talk quite a bit about how their faith, their theologies, their friendships and have brought them together to plan, fund, and implement projects that break down barriers within their communities to make those communities better places for all. Some of the challenges and successes they've had and um, how their work has made a difference. So I'm very excited about that. If you register, click on the registration play page, you'll see uh, where you can click on the SALSA registration here. But then if you are a student or if you're experiencing financial hardship, you'll be able to click on a different link, which will take you to a different registration for those who, who need our assistance. But we really appreciate your donations. Uh, we're, we've been generously funded this year by a number of sponsors. Uh, and uh, our grant work, uh, also for the Pittsburgh Blueberry Project, has been generously funded by Duquesne Light as one of their community impact grants. So I'm glad to see that Renika is on the call with us tonight. She's probably better suited to tell you a little bit more about the petition that we are hoping to have many PAIPL uh, supporters sign uh, called Climate Can't Wait and also the PAIPL PA voter de-escalation training that's coming up on Sunday the 30th. Renika, would you like to talk about the petition? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so right now the administration is considering several um, administrative rules to address toxic power plant pollution, um, but these rules are being reviewed by the White House Office of Management and Budget and they're being stalled by polluters like Chevron and Phillips 66 um, and their defenders like the American Petroleum Institute and the National Association of Manufacturers. And so we need the rules to be released for public comment right now. Um, air pollution costs all of us in lives, as we all know, environmental harm and damage to local economies, especially for communities that are traditionally overburdened by pollution. And we just believe that our health and our climate can't wait, right? So um, I've got a link to the petition that I will share in the chat right now. Great. Um, and we are pretty close, I believe. We just need 20 more signatures until the goal. So that would be really awesome if we could get um, at least 20 more, but I'm sure we'll be able to get more. Hopefully we'll be able to get 10 tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and then here is the um, voter de-escalation training. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so the civic engagement is obviously a top priority. And so in order for that to happen, we want people to be able to visit the polls and vote comfortably, no matter who they are, no matter their race, class, gender, or party. So we are interested in getting community members involved in securing polling locations and ensuring that everybody is safe. Um, so on Sunday, October 30th, from 11 a.m. to 12.30, we're going to have a de-escalation training uh, for people who are able to be at the polls and make sure the polls are safe. I am also going to share the link to that right now in the chat. Oh, wait, looks like it's already in there. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll put it in there. Yeah, um, well, thanks for that. Yeah. Sure. I'll, I'll put the others in there as well, and, and I'll be sure to send the, all of these links to everybody who registered for tonight's meeting uh, in case uh, you can't pull them out of the chat easily. Um, is there anything else you want to share with us, Renika, about your work with PAIPL? Um, I will just say that I started uh, helping out recently, and I am excited to get more involved. Great. Great to have you aboard. Uh, so, oh, oh, uh, let me just fill in with a little bit more on the environmental education and in-person sessions. Uh, between my contacts at Ballfield Farm on the north side, Garfield Community Farm, and Valley View Presbyterian in, uh, Church in Garfield, we're going to be distributing 26 compost bins to the attendees of those uh, workshops. So I'm very excited about that. Those are provided by our grant. So next we'll be moving on to rain barrels in the 
water and uh, energy uh, conservation sessions, and we hope to be distributing just as many of those uh, rain barrels to people who attend the workshops. So uh, those are moving along, and we hope we're going to be reapplying uh, with Katie's help to the DEP for an extension of those education session grants in 2023 and 2024. So hopefully we'll be successful there and we'll continue to reach out to environmental justice communities across the state. I think those are all the updates I have. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Katie? No, I think you covered it all. Um, I'm hoping to see folks out at our annual conference. I'm really excited. Um, I met with the I'm the keynote speaker and the, my fellow response panelist earlier this week, and we had a great conversation, and I think it will be a really fun um, opening session. So I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Wow. This is such a great organization. And I want to tell you, I am so happy that Jillian is going to speak tonight. Um, I would like to introduce Jillian Graber, and I've known her for some time. I think it's been nine years when she started uh, to uh, protect uh, Penn Trafford, and she just started with the bang and she keeps on going. She's the executive director and co-founder of uh, Protect Penn Trafford. She's a mother of two, and she's passionate about keeping children safe from impacts of fracking. After an experience dealing with air pollution issues in her own home, she had first-hand knowledge of the health impacts pollution can have on a family and how government agencies often ignore residents in distress. And I just really, she's done so much, is doing so much. Take it away, Jillian. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the invite, um, Wanda and Kathy, and thanks so much um, for everyone joining. Uh, I'm really excited to be here and uh, talk about the work that we do. Um, and actually, one of the things that we did this, this summer, <laughs> which was really fun and also we feel like impactful, we were um, a part of the PA Climate Convergence, um, so folks from around the state uh, got together to converge in Harrisburg. Uh, to d demand climate action now. Um, and so there, uh, I see one familiar face from tonight in this picture. <laughs> uh, and uh, so this is actually, um, we've got some of our staff, some of our interns and my children here who have been going to rallies since they were very small um, and rallying around issues of climate action and um, also issues of about fracking and environmental pollution. So if you wouldn't mind going to the next screen. So just to kind of give you a little bit of overview, I think Lois talked about our mission statement earlier, but we're a nonprofit dedicated to ensuring residents safety, security, and quality of life by engaging in um, education and advocacy to protect economic, environmental, and legal rights. And this is for people in Westmoreland and Allegheny County. Um, and so since we started just as a group of neighbors working together to protect our neighborhood from the invasion of the oil and gas industry back in late 2014, we have grown um, to a community-based organization with staff, volunteers, and members. Um, and this is actually my kids walking in the, <laughs> walking in the woods. Um, so next slide, please. So I think that the environment means something different to everybody. And um, I think that this is a good way to start the conversation about the environment. Uh, it sounds like folks here are very familiar with the environment, environmental harm, environmental justice, um, but you know, it means different things to different people. Um, sometimes the environment means being, being in a place that is safe to play, um, clean water to drink, you know, something that is a really, simple right that we you know that that everyone you know should have the the ability to to breathe fresh air <laughs> and drink clean water um and then you know that also i think extends to the food that we eat and um you know the environment that we surround ourselves with it also extends to our home um so our environment can be our home and so you know we're we're going to talk tonight about 
some of the things that maybe um, are, are impacting our environment and how they're impacting our environment and our health. Um, so next slide. So um, this is a map that's actually available on our website if you go to protectpt.org slash fracking map. Um, this is a map of our service area in Westmoreland and Allegheny County. Um, we also have in PT in our, our like main area, I've got some schools and daycares listed here. Um, this is well pads as well as um, compressor stations. Uh, and then the Mariner East Pipeline is in here because that also goes through two, our two counties. But that's not it. I mean, there's processing plants, there's pigging stations, there are all these different types of infrastructure that are around our, our neighborhoods and um, around our children that we need to be aware of. So part of what we do is try to educate folks to uh, help them understand what's around them because the, the first line of defense of knowing how to protect yourself is knowing what's around you that you need to protect yourself from. Um, so next slide. Um, so this actually shows that um, in Westmoreland County, um, and this is just one of many, many fracked counties in Pennsylvania, um, over 607 permits have been issued since 20, uh, 2009. Um, and there are lots of more abandoned wells. There's lots of uh, conventional wells. This is just the unconventional. Um, and um, there has been a rise of applications for injection wells as well. Um, there's actually one that we are um, participating in opposing in Plum, Pennsylvania, right along the Allegheny River. So our concern there is that if something happens um, at the well where there's a failure of the casing, then it could contaminate the drinking water supply for Pittsburgh um, because the drinking water supply of Pittsburgh is the Allegheny River. Um, so uh, as well as other <laughs> downstream users that, that, that rely on that water to, uh, to, to drink um, and uh, after processing. So there's also a real lack of corporate accountability uh, and reliable information on the actions of the people that are doing this really complicated and technical work in our communities. Um, and so it's really hard to sometimes get the correct information about the company. Um, and so uh, one thing we do is try to educate people on how to, how to get that information. Um, and especially local lawmakers as well, because they're the ones that have the power to say no that we don't want this in our, our community. Um, and I think that a really important part of deciding as a, um, you know, as anyone in your community would be, you know, do we want the, the people that are doing this work, um, do we want them to be reliable people? Do we want them to be responsible people? Um, and in this case, unfortunately, Pennsylvania has a pretty bad track record of allowing irresponsible drillers um, to move forward with permitting um, even though they have multiple violations of state and federal law. Um, and then finally there are human health impacts um, and major quality of life impacts that we want to address. So next slide. All right, so this is actually the uh, one of the well pads right near our office. It's called the Gaia well pad. Um, I want to thank, um, so Frack Tracker Alliance, they um, take some great photos and drone footage of well pads in our community. Um, so you can see what a heavy uh, industrial, hot, hot, you know, large scale operation this is. This is taken from a drone high up in the air. These walls are very high walls. They're supposed to help with sound which can impact quality of life. Um, but ultimately, the people that live around this are, um, you know, inundated with this heavy industrial complex um, that's gonna cause unwanted impacts in their community. Um, another thing we have to worry about is trucks. And I'm gonna talk a little bit um, in, a, in a minute about waste, but um, this is uh, actually a waste truck from the landfill. Um, and uh, we'll, we're going to talk about leachate and how that's a, that kind of plays a part here as well. But you want to be careful um, and notice these trucks on your roads. 
Um, remember I said in the beginning, like one of the first lines of defense that we have is individuals um, and to protect our families and our friends and our communities is to know what's around us. Um, this is one thing that is around us all the time that maybe we don't really think about, um, but this is a child carrying what's called residual waste, um, but it's really carrying leachate. Um, and we're gonna talk about why that's important later. So go ahead to the next slide. Okay, and then remember I talked about corporate accountability. So this again is a map from our friends at Frack Tracker, and they, t they keep an eye on the violations that happen. Um, this is a map of our region of Pittsburgh and surrounding communities. Um, and you can see in the yellow, those are all violations of state and federal law. Um, most of them health and safety violations. Um, so this is something to keep an eye on when you're talking about whether this is something that, you know, um, you'd want to oppose in your, your neighborhood. Uh, so go ahead to the next slide. Um, this is a, actually a startling graphic. Um, it, it shows the difference between the number of wells that have been drilled versus the number of violations that have happened. Um, so you can see that um, drilling in uh, recent years has actually gone down. It's, it's going up again this year because of unfortunately things happening in the world that are making, um, are, are giving the, the fossil fuel extractors an opportunity to, um, to um, talk about um, a scenario where they need more fossil fuel, at least that's what they say is happening. Um, you know, some, some of us know that's not true. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, this, this goes to show that even if they decrease their activity, actually, that doesn't stop things from going wrong at the well pad. Um, so this is uh, this this talks about the violations versus the number of wells that were drilled. So next slide. Okay, and you can see this is actually a well pad right uh, in our community, uh, the Quest well pad, um, showing some air pollution. This is uh, silica dust. So um, anyone that's familiar with the fracking process, and we actually do have some great videos on our YouTube channel if anybody wants to visit it for more information, but um, this is uh, sand um, that is billowing out of the chute. That chute then goes down into this, this hole, um, and so sand, water, and chemicals are shot down into the earth um, at very high pressures to be able to fracture open um, the, the strata underneath us, about you know 3,000 feet below our feet and then the water is pumped back up and this sand that's billowing in the air is actually meant to prop open those fractures and fissures to be able to let the gas flow. Unfortunately, in this case, this operator chose to continue operations even though there was an equipment malfunction um, that is causing this air pollution. Um, and this is on the border of Murraysville and, and Penn Township. And I can tell you that people in Murraysville from two miles away complained that they had sand on their vehicles overnight after this day happened. So this is something that people are breathing in for miles around. And this, um, sil this sand can cause what's called silicosis. It's a, a disease of the lung tissue. Um, so this can be quite harmful to human health. Another thing we need to worry about is, um, you know, all these fractures that are that they're making below our feet are causing underground things to shift and to communicate. Um, so basically, the migration of the gas that's below our feet uh, migrating to places where it wouldn't be there, where it wasn't before. So around our our drinking water source for Westmoreland and part of Allegheny and, and a couple other counties. Um, we have the Beaver Run Reservoir, and that is um, a very heavily fracked area right around the reservoir where we get our drinking water from. And um, in 2019, there was an accident when they were fracking into a Utica shale where the casing failed 
because the pressure caused the the steel to collapse and um, to, to crack and become brittle. Um, and so that actually caused a huge um, high pressure um, dispersion of methane, which is natural gas, um, to go to nine conventional wells. So it, it migrated from this one well to nine conventional wells a mile in both directions, southeast and northwest. And so you can imagine how much the ground underneath this is fracked and how much it's um, cracked and, and all of this, this rock is communicating um, and everything that's down there is moving around. Um, and this is not making things better. Um, so it's something to be careful of. Um, if you go ahead to the next slide. Um, this is a great example of this. This is actually the Beaver Run Reservoir with a map of the laterals, which is the, the fracture pathways underneath the reservoir. Um, and so one of the things that can happen is um, drinking water can be impacted. Um, you can see here this um, lady lighting the, her water on fire. This really happens in Pennsylvania um, and uh, has happened for several years here in Pennsylvania. Um, and so one of the things we did a couple years ago is have um, graphics made about some of the work that we do. Um, and actually this is uh, <laughs> the Beaver Run Reservoir. All the animals are, um, you know, convening and um, talking about how they can uh, make their environment clean. Um, and you can see the nine wells uh, flaring in the background um, and the fish are, um, you know, fracking has happened underneath the, the, the reservoir itself. So go ahead to the next slide. You know, there's also other impacts. There's mental health impacts as well from living near fracking. Um, there's a lot of noise pollution, blinding lights that can cause sleep disturbances, and heavy trucks can vibrate your home. Um, so that's another issue. We have a resident that has given us a quote here uh, and some pictures of what that looks like. Go ahead to the next slide. Um, noise can be experienced um, near well pads that actually exceeds EPA recommendations. Um, we do noise studies in um, at, at Protect PT. That's one of the unique um, programs that we offer that no one else does. Um, and so you can see an example of what we found at well pads here. Um, go ahead to the next slide. Um, I think you need to go back one more thing. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, and then uh, we talked earlier about those residual waste trucks, right? So um, fracking causes a lot of waste. Um, this is a big problem because it's one thing when the pollution dissipates from the extraction site into the air, moves around in the air. It's another thing when what they're digging up is this ancient seabed that is radioactive. It contains heavy metals, it contains radioactivity, um, and so all the sand, water, and um, chemicals that went down the hole are now coming back up, laced with um, radioactivity. And so um, one of these sites, actually, this Max Environmental Facility in um, Westmoreland County, um, there's also one in Washington County right near this one, um, and these actually take the um, take this this waste along with other municipal sites that take this waste, like the Westmoreland Sanitary Landfill. Um, it's one of the landfills that accepts the waste. It's supposed to be tested for radioactivity, but as we've found in recent studies, it's actually not tested properly, and that radioactivity is actually accumulating in our landfills right in our backyards. Um, so if you go to the next slide. Um, remember I was talking about that leachate truck earlier? So this is Dr. John Stoles from Duquesne. Um, he has done a lot of testing of people's water that has been contaminated from fracking. Um, he also tested the, the um, Bell Vernon Water Authority treatment facility that had been taking the leachate from the Westmoreland Sanitary Landfill. And um, he found that the, the leachate is very close to produced water from oil and gas extraction. So the water that is running through the landfill material, which is drill cuttings, is collecting into ponds and being trucked to or piped to the, the water treatment facility.
but this water is so contaminated it kills all the good bugs and bacteria and enzymes that help clean that water. Um, and so they had to shut the plant down temporarily to, to, to get the plant back up um, to where it could actually process that water. Um, and in the meantime, this stuff is being trapped on our roads. Um, so even if you don't live near a fracking well pad, chances are you live near a road where the waste is being transported. Um, so uh, if you go to head to the next slide, I want to mention too, um, and this is a, our graphic on leachate to kind of give people a better understanding of how that happens. Um, I will say, you know, this leachate, unfortunately at the Westmoreland Sanitary Landfill, one of the, the DEP's um, proposed um, ways that the landfill can keep operating um, with less cost is that they would uh, allow the, the waste to be um, dispersed or evaporated into the air. So if it wasn't bad enough that it was going into the river, uh, into the mon, it's now proposed that it's going to go into the air. Um, so one of the next things I'm going to talk about, I think next slide, um, um, health implications. Um, there are a lot of people that feel that a lot of the rare cancers that are happening here in Southwest PA are linked to fracking. Um, there are lots of childhood cancers that are supposed to be rare that are, that are not so rare. Um, I was actually on a call last night with folks from Washington County and around Southwest PA um, with uh, one of our partner organizations, CCJ, who has been um, working with um, this, this, the PIT study and the Department of Health to try to get answers for the families that have been impacted um, by um, their children coming with these cancers. So go ahead to the next slide. Something that also people might not realize is that this impacts your property values um, as well. So if you do own property or own a home and you're near a well site, it could impact your, your, um, your if it's that's your retirement, it could impact your retirement if that's, you know, what, what you're going to work on. Um, oh, that's okay. You can go to the next slide. So, um, so our approach, um, now we talked about all the, like, bad things that are happening around us, but let's talk about the good stuff. So our approach is um, multifaceted. So one, we educate our community. That allows us to really let people know about what's going on in the community and how they can engage. They can engage their local municipality, they can engage um, local lawmakers, um, they can engage the DEP and write comments. Um, we can also legally empower people. So um, we can, uh, you know, if the DEP is not gonna do their job and protect us, we can, um, we can hold them accountable for doing that job by, um, you know, um, filing a lawsuit against them if, if we need to, and hopefully um, that makes some, some change as well. Um, I actually just found out yesterday that um, the DEP has all these permits that come through and nobody makes comments on them. And they said, you know, there's one organization that always makes comments on all the permits <laughs> and that's Protect PD. Um, so we're really getting um, our strategies working. You know, part of our strategy is to um, just really make, <clears throat> hold them accountable to do their job and look at the, per the permits a little bit more careful and we're making a difference in that, in that effort. And then finally to monitor, you know, how are you going to know if your air is contaminated if you don't know what's in your air? So um, we have an air monitoring program. Uh, these are actually my kids um, uh, at, at a well site that was proposed nine years ago in the background that's not a well site yet. One of our, our small victories. <laughs> um, that well site is proposed less than a half mile from my home, and it's a beautiful a field right now, and it has been for nine years um, because of our efforts. Um, it has native flowers and plants uh, on that field, and we're hoping that it stays that way um, and that our kids can enjoy clean air for, um, for the future and for the generations yet to come. So if you go to the next slide. <clears throat> We also do things like engage in um, our Reimagine Turtle Creek Watershed and Airshed Communities Program. 
uh, part of that program um, is to uh, give backyard gardens to um, folks that are um, in need uh, and teach them how to have um, a sustainable food stores. So something that I heard earlier on this call. <laughs> um, and so this is our, our garden program that um, is with Reimagine Food Systems. Uh, we also, this is um, a picture of a meeting that we had about a pipeline just recently at our new um, Community Environmental Education Center. Um, and uh, we're able to, at that office, at our office, um, we're able to have public meetings like this uh, where we can educate folks and um, also have fun events as well. So I am, you know, want to um, invite everybody to go to our website to look on our events page. Every month we have a community lunch and learn uh, the last Tuesday of each month. So uh, we had one yesterday. Those are all posted on YouTube. Um, so we have that on our events page as well. Um, some previous um, videos and you can learn about all kinds of environmental justice issues about um, how to hold polluters accountable, um, everything from radon in your home to, um, you know, how to, um, how to, how to um, have a sustainability uh, focus in your, in your community. So thank you all for, for allowing me to talk tonight. And, um, you know, if anybody has any questions, let me know. Thank you, Jillian. Wow. <clears throat> One thing that's really, stands out in in this presentation is that there's so many good people so many citizens helping the people that you you've mentioned in here and frack tracker alliance uh dr stoltz um these people have been helping others for years and um you know the work that you're doing and reaching out and finding people to work and uh, help you save your community and save all of, <laughs> all of Westmoreland County and Allegheny County is just <clears throat> amazing and wonderful. Um, it, it's interesting to hear that you have a center now, an environmental center. That's really, really great. Um, I really encourage people to uh, unmute yourself and ask uh, questions of of Jillian, because this is this is amazing work that's being done. I was noticing Lois Drumheller uh, also is in Monroeville, and, and she produced food in Monroeville for uh, with an organization uh, that really cared about the cares about the environment. Um, Lois, you want to talk a little bit about your involvement here in this work with PT, P PTT? Uh, protect PT, sure. Um, well, thank you. Um, you know, I, I've been a respiratory therapist 43 years, and somehow by luck, it was the middle of, nine, uh, 19, of 2019 that I was able to retire, which it was lucky for me because of what was to come. Um, but, you know, I had been a member and so had Dave Mintz of uh, a library, Monroeville Public Library would meet and call themselves Sustainable Monroeville. And in fact, that's where Jillian came to talk to us. And I remember saying, you know, when I retire, I'd like to help you. And, I, you know, in, in her cute and wonderful voice, she goes, but yeah, I can't pay you. You know, I said, I don't want to be paid. I want to do something that I really uh, can be proud of that's not connected to a, you know, quid pro quo. You work like the devil and you get paid for it, but maybe you're not. I want to do something that I can be proud of. Um, and so that's something I've been immensely proud of because uh, I was able to do that uh, later on, a few months after that, start to, to be on the board. And um, I chair the board now, always looking for people who would love to join in membership. And then if they feel like they might even eventually want to join the board sure i'm not too pushy but i sure certainly invite people in because <clears throat> it's really been educational and um empowering to to learn more about what people just right over the county line have been going through monroeville a lot of people are asleep at the switch one thing we 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 had was behind the monroeville public library 
um, back in 2010 when I was serving council at the time, um, I wanted to start uh, as a something suggested in sustainable Monroeville, a food, uh, uh, you know, a food garden, which we did. And we were able to provide at least four years in a row, anywhere between 500 and 800 pounds of organic fresh produce a year. And we served four food banks. And boy, what a great feeling that gives you. And that feeling is, is carried on because I learned a little bit uh, uh, about, you know, what you can do on a shoestring budget. And I've learned so much more on what you can do with, it's like my grandmother said, um, you know, more hands make the task easier. And uh, all the programs that have come uh, into being because of the hard work and going out to foundations and uh, acquiring the grants to do some of the education and the monitoring and um, the advocacy and the empowering of other people. It can't happen fast enough in my in my world, you know. I'm I, I just turned sixty nine, and I feel like, doggone it, I should have felt this way twenty years ago. But but this is this is what brings everybody to an organization that's successful like this. It's it's a, a small and mighty organization, and um, I certainly I see nothing but. Um, I hope we get to the point where we are instead of just trying to protect all this harm promoting all the things that come out of it. And that's why the umbrella organization over Protect PT is called Promote PT, Penn, Town, uh, Penn Trafford, uh, but, but protect and promote all of what we have, just as you were explaining in the beginning of this with that wonderful blueberry project. Yeah. Oh. oh, thank you. Does anybody have any questions or um, did you get all the information you need to to go to protect PT and and learn more and get a hold of Jillian if you want to do something in your area and these little bit of ideas or even more of the history because the history is fantastic. People like like uh, Lois and and Jillian and people um, in the East have been really really working hard for at least the last 12 years. Um, and I really salute you. Wonderful work. So does anybody have any questions? Is it easy? I have a question about those blueberries. Would you go to the same source again? Uh, yes, I believe we would. Uh, we we want to focus on environmental justice communities if possible. So we want to make sure that those who are receiving the shrubs have a financial need or a food des are living within a food desert, uh, so that we can help to feed their families while we retain stormwater and on site, decrease the heat island effect, and make the air cleaner. But uh, we would love to hear from you, Lois, and any organizations that you know. Uh, they really should be distributed in Duquesne Light territory. So we need to make sure that you're within the Duquesne Light service area uh, because it was funded by Duquesne Light's Community Impact Grant Program. But please reach out at outreach at paipl.org and I'll try to connect you. Yeah, not only will I do that, but also within the program of Protect PT is uh, something that is part of a grant that's part of the program underneath that which is uh, Turtle Creek Water and Airshed Communities Plus. And that's part of their uh, mission as well because of what they did in the areas that needed it the most. They were able to construct and uh, you know put um, soil in and then deliver produce to those places. That's right in line with what you were just describing. Mm -hmm. I just uh, thank you, Lois. Yes, absolutely. That would be great. The Turtle Creek Watershed Association has a wonderful website. It's full of resources, so I encourage you to look there. Uh, I, I also just put into the chat contact information for Heaven Sensky, heaven at centerforcoalfieldjustice.org or CCJ, which Jillian mentioned in her talk. Uh, I happened to meet Heaven on the same evening I met Jillian for the first time uh, when we were attending the clean the 2022 clean energy justice convergence at Phipps Conservatory where Jillian and Heaven were both speaking. So Heaven would be probably your contact in Washington County. 
would you think, uh, Jillian and Lois, if you want to get more information on fracking and you're in Washington County, and then Jillian and uh, Lois for Penn Trafford information. Yeah, and also one of our board members, uh, Lois uh, uh, Bjornsson, um, is on the board of Protect PT, and we've learned so much through, and she's in Washington County, of course, but yeah. she's also provided something called Frackland Tours, which you may have heard about. Right, they did have some of those at the convergence yeah. that we were sort of, we were at the alt ministerium, correct? <laughs> we, were, we were attending those uh, or, uh, presentations by those who were talking the truth rather than trying to cover cover it up. So it was a, a wonderful experience. And one thing that um, Wanda was talking about earlier, there's so many great organizations around Pittsburgh that are doing this work. If you live in a county other than um, Allegheny, Wa Westmoreland, or Washington County, and you um, have air pollution or, or fracking issues or, or environmental issues, um, you know, get in contact with us and we'll get you in contact with somebody that's working in that area because, you know, um, there's folks working in Fayette County and Somerset County, like Mountain Watershed Association, um, you know, CCJs in, in Green in Washington County. Um, there's folks in Beaver working around the Beaver Cracker plant. Uh, we know all those folks. Um, the, the nice, I guess one of the nice things about um, the environmental movement here in, in Pittsburgh is that everyone knows everyone and we're all con um, converging and convening and working together uh, to, to make our region a better place to live um, and, and hold polluters accountable. So um, yes, I heard um, Women for a Healthy Environment. Um, Jermaine was also at the, the convergence with us as well. Um, yeah, just a lot of stuff. And I want to mention too, the, um, so our reimagined Turtle Creek watershed and airshed communities is different than um, the Turtle Creek Watershed Association. Um, it's it's a little different so the turtle creek watershed association um is uh, they are a 501c3 um and they have been around for a really long time they they lost their status for a while um but have gained it back um but uh and i i haven't been to their website recently but i did pop the website for the reimagine we call it tick quack reimagine um turtle creek watershed and airshed communities um, and we go beyond the watershed um, because we're also working in the airshed. Um, but that's where the food systems program that Lois was talking about, where we give backyard gardens to families in need. Wow. Wonderful work. Wonderful work. Well, I, I think it's probably just about time for us to um, end our time together. Can I mention one more thing, yes. uh, Wanda, because, because it's something you and I have actually participated in. It's called Reducing Outdoor Contaminants in Indoor Spaces or RACUS. This yeah. is was an organization that started by Linda Wigington, who was one of my thesis advisors many years ago. And you can reach her at lwigington1 at outlook.com, or you can look, I think it's raucous.org, you know, is there... Um, is their website. So what they help you to do, particularly if you're living around environmental polluters, you can test your ambient outdoor air quality and compare it to your testing of your indoor ambient air quality. So um, I encourage you to contact Linda or get in touch with me and I'll put you together with Linda. They're having another cohort coming up. It'll be cohort 53. Yes, great, Jillian. Jillian did it. Uh, Wanda did it, I did it. Uh, it's a really great experience. You learn quite a bit about your air quality. Uh, so they're gonna be uh, signing people up on, it's before Thanksgiving, I think it's November 17th and 18th is their intro webinar. And then after you do that webinar, you decide whether you're gonna participate starting in December. So it's coming up soon. So please get in touch and we'll connect you all. Great. Uh, yeah. Uh, Wanda, I, I put my um, email and um, phone number in the in the chat for anybody who's interested in getting some blueberry bushes because it's a first come first serve basis. So 
the sooner I know about it, the sooner I can get you on the list and we can make arrangements. Okay. That's dkochirka at gmail.com or 412-722-4539. Does anybody else have something for the good of the order before we get off tonight? I want to send everyone forth to love and serve their communities, protecting the air, the water, the earth. Go forth in love. Bye now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Wanda. Thanks for everybody. Thanks, Jillian and uh, Katie and Thank Renica you. for helping with the presentation. Thank you. Lovely evening. You too. Have a great night.